KDOW. KDOW. Streaming now on smart speakers and radio.com. The views and opinions expressed by Rob Black and his guests are not necessarily those of KDOW or its management owners or advertisers and should not be construed as legal tax or investment advice. Always consult with the appropriate advisor before making any investment or financial planning decision. Insightful. Informative. Irreverent. We're ready. 1220 KDOW presents Rob Black and Your Money. Your source for breaking news, market updates, and successful investment strategies for the 21st century. Sounds like a great program. Getting you to retirement in today's market. So let's get on with the show. Taxes, family finance, insurance, the economy, technology, media, and entertainment. Rob is talking about it with you at 800-516-1220. So call in. We'll chat and uh, have some fun. Now to start your day with the latest news and market commentary. Here's Rob Black on the Bay Area's business leader, 1220 KDOW. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Thanks for listening to the show. I think there will be some big drama today, as Trump's final clemency list could stir up controversy. Um, there is an inauguration that should happen tomorrow. So there's a little bit of digestion, transition of power. With that territory comes stocks are advancing on optimism that Janet Yellen testimony is not going to muck things up. She's been the head of the Federal Reserve. She's been serving in government for her whole entire life. She knows the economy well. I honestly could not think of 10 people more qualified. I didn't mind Steve Mnuchin. He worked on Wall Street. He had some real world experience. I did not mind. And again, you can go through this list on a pretty consecutive. Con- I don't want it to be all businessmen all the time. So I kind of want it on a theory sometimes to be uh, government workers, sometimes uh, university professors. I kind of like the change, but that's me. I kind of like a night of no meat, followed by a night of a big steak, followed by a night of a little bit of meat, followed by a fruit and nuts kind of night. Like, I like diversity in my food groups and my political aspirations. I love that Jenny Ellen's a woman. She's going in front of Congress and she owns this. She should fly through and she'll help set the tone for the U.S. economy. And like I said, she's been a Federal Reserve member, so she knows what inflation is. She knows what full employment is. She's going to try to get jobs for people, not just tax breaks. Um, again, maybe I'm a little too pie in the sky. Maybe I am a bit too naive. And those are all fair criticisms when it comes to anything that comes out of my mouth about politics. I try not to do it. I'd prefer to talk about Microsoft partnering with GM's crews in a new $2 billion round of trying to get into the, the Holy Grail, the car. Which is it still the Holy Grail? Because when there was... The pandemic, before the pandemic, I was in my car 50 miles a day. Now I'm in my car maybe 50 miles a month, it feels like. But Apple is going to be turned on and Google's going to be turned on inside of Tesla soon. They've kind of seen, we've seen the source code going around what Tesla's doing. So those will become a little bit more tech heavy, maybe is the right way of saying it. We know last week and the week before, there was a lot of leaks about Apple developing a car. Is it a car? Is it an automation system? Or is it an operating system for a car? Or is it what's – there's a lot of questions, right? There's a lot going on in the world of cars and technology. There's also a lot going on in the world of television and streaming. This week, we're going to get earnings out of Netflix. And uh, five letters that I want you to, to pay attention to are churn. We no longer care about Netflix making money. They can do it. We no longer care about how much debt they have. In theory, they're going to have less debt in the future because they don't need to borrow money to pay for big international shows. Um, 
that come out of China, that come out of Japan, that come out of South Korea, that come out of Spain. There's some amazing television shows that Netflix is producing worldwide, and that costs money. So they don't have to borrow the money, and they don't have to make the money, because we know that they can get by on both of those. Now we need to know, how do they do against Disney Plus? How do they do against Peacock, HBO Max, FUBU? There is no lack of competition going on there. So we're going to learn five letters. In ice cream, these five letters are awesome. Churn. In over-the-top subscriptions, uh, you don't want a lot of churn. So that's going to be the number one thing we pay attention to. On top of who does Donald Trump pardon? On top of will there be violence in Washington, D.C.? On top of does Janet Yellen get appointed to be Treasury Secretary? Approved. Like, there's some questions that we're going to have answered this week, and it's kind of nice. Keep in mind, we are in an earnings season that reflects the fourth quarter of 2020. The fourth quarter of 2020 is compared to the fourth quarter of 2019. When uh, the pandemic and the COVID-19 flu was just kind of a, an incubating idea in China, to the best of our knowledge. I don't know. I'm starting to think that maybe it was conceived in a, <laughs> a lab in Canada. For the record, that's just totally made up news. There's no rumor that COVID-19 was made up in Canada other than the moose looks kind of guilty. Take off, you hosers. Bob and Doug McKenzie, where were they at the end of 2020? Huh? Huh? Were they at a wet market in Toronto? Eh? Eh? Okay, that's not even funny. But at some point in time, it would be cute to blame either Switzerland or Canada because they're like the two nicest countries in the world. So that brings us to Biden will probably have a much calmer relationship with China than Trump did. Trump had a lot of the bluster of a New Yorker who came to Washington and I can negotiate anything. And China's been a complicated relationship for the United States for 60 plus years. And they don't really like negotiating. They want to look like the winners. We want to look like the winners. Best thing you can do is kind of partner with them and plug your nose on things that make you that smell bad. With that said, maybe that's not the best thing you can do. I can tell you up until President Trump, we didn't want the manufacturing jobs in the United States. We wanted them in Asia because it kept our quality of life positive. It kept labor costs down on things that we wanted to consume, like televisions and phones and sneakers. And when you keep the labor costs down, you can keep the inflationary fears down because those extra costs of the United States that ha have unions and that have liberties for workers that include taking breaks. You know, pre-Trump, we, we, we'd turn on 60 Minutes on Sunday and we'd learn like, oh, there was a factory in China where workers are committing suicide by the dozens each day. And like, what's going on in China? Are they forcing people to work? And we didn't care because they were making our goods for us. We cared enough to get it to 60 minutes, but not enough to like stop buying the product. What do you mean there's little children walking through mines that have no oxygen in it? And they, they like, we didn't care. We saw it as a cost of doing business. So Trump saying, let's get the jobs back in America. Not the worst thing in the world. Maybe not going to really happen. But it was worth a shot, maybe. Anyhow, and anyway, there's going to be a lot said and done this week. Probably more said than done. But it's a good week for us to get through. If we go sideways this week, I'll consider it a victory. If we do it peacefully, I'll consider it a victory. We'll be constructive after that fact. Look, you can find me online at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Change. 
Portions of our programming are brought to you by our good friends at Provident Credit Union. With 21 Bay Area locations to serve you and your banking needs. Now, back to Rob Black and your money with your host, Rob Black. On the Bay Area's business leader, AM 1220 KDOW. Welcome in. Rob Black and your money. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money investing and more. Wall Street works in mysterious ways. Not so much. I think Wall Street is a discounting mechanism looking to the future. Wall Street does not like uncertainty when it can't discount the future. One of the areas during the pandemic that I'm, I know we talked about, and I know you heard me, um, this show gets a million plus downloads a year. Like, I know the power of the show. I talked about DraftKings during the pandemic and how the ability to go to the San Mateo Convention Center, which is the convention center four or five miles from my house, and they go, you want to get a COVID test? Why? And you're like, well, my kids went to school and he said he had a cold and the teacher said he can't come back until he gets a negative test. And I'm like, okay, get in line. <clears throat> Family of four gets a test. There's no bill. There's nothing. There's no insurance form. And you're like, how did that happen? It's expensive. And states just spent money trying to help citizens figure out what they can and can't do on a health level. And typically we go, that's called a state service. Now, we know state services from let's feed homeless people. We know state services from... You know, there's a big wildfire. Let's send out firefighters. That's going to be a bill. Someone's going to have to pay it. We're going to raise taxes for it. One area that we've always been able to count on is politicians love tax money. They will find a way to feed the poor, feed the hungry, feed the children, feed the world. They will find a way to spend your tax money to potentially maybe secure votes for themselves. I know that's cynical, but I live in a cynical world. As sports betting legalization has played in some states more so than others, think of Nevada and New Jersey as the two states that it played in before the pandemic, and think after the pandemic, we need tax money, it's going to play in more. Some states have horse racing, some states have lotteries, only two states had full-on sports betting, and that, that number is growing every election going forward, in my opinion. I brought up a company called DraftKings. I'm not bragging. I'm not touting. I'm not shouting. I'm not doing anything like that. Stock's up 70% since I, I first brought it up. I think it still has room to go because I think there's more states to play out. Now, I would rather – and this is where it gets crazy, crazy editorial coming, crazy editorial coming in three. Two, one. I'd rather invest in a gambling as a sin versus maybe a different type of sin as a tax, right? What can we tax? We tax sodas. They make kids fat. Fat equals diabetes. Diabetes equals healthcare costs, right? We can tax cigarettes. Cigarettes cause cancer. Poor people get cancer. You see the commercials about the black community and menthol cigarettes and they're doing slam poetry. Um, I get it. We can tax cigarettes. We can tax alcohol. We can tax soda. Marijuana. Eh, this one's a little bit tougher for me because I've, I haven't been burned, but I've already seen once an investment cycle fizzle. <clears throat> Two and a half years ago, we got more states legalizing marijuana. This election, we got more states legalizing marijuana. And the way the marijuana industry looks at it is there's really only like six states, two countries. If you look at a globe and look at how many states are left, there's a lot, a lot of land to go. And everyone believes that states need tax money to help offset the cost of the pandemic where we gave people unemployment benefits, we extended it. We gave them fatter checks on a federal level, fatter checks on a state level. We're going to want to claw some of that back. I've heard proposals like, let's tax 
the top 5% of America, 2%, a one-time tax of 2%, and that'll pull in a couple trillion dollars and it'll help pay for everything. I don't know if that's viable. I, again, that's when we start getting into, it sounds like it's doable, but I don't really know political commentary, which I don't want to be a part of. All I want to tell you is that I don't think marijuana has worked out the way people want it marijuana to work out. And I'm not saying DraftKings and sports betting will work out the same way. But to me, marijuana feels like it's not that tough of a business to get into. Um, and it's not that tough of a business to pull off. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad one because I think it's an investable theme for the foreseeable future. I just think the winners and losers are going to be a lot tougher than, say, DraftKings and Penn National Racing for gambling. The expanding legalization of digital sports betting is an emerging trend. I was watching a San Jose Sharks game last night, and in between periods, they came on and they, they had some weird betting lines. Like the odds of a player getting a hat trick. If you put down $10, you would have got 250 on Brett Burns or something like that. I only saw the line for like one second. I'm like, what's that doing on Comcast Sports? It's a regional sport. It's California. California can't even bet on this kind of thing. Oh, they're prepping for it. So uh, sports bets make sporting events more interesting. Is that the idea? Is it because we get a, a square and we we bet on the Super Bowl illegally in office pools that we watch the game? Or is it because it's that exciting of a game? A couple of years, it's been pretty exciting of a game. But I think for the most part, people kind of get pulled in on the commercials and the gambling. I think DraftKings is a future. It's all about our for taking action. I think ever mentioned on the show. Rob Black has no financial interest in DraftKings. Netflix usage continued to climb internationally during the fourth quarter, but North America usage dipped. I don't think that's a surprise. In the fourth quarter, I got Time Warner Plus, and I was like, ooh, let's see what they got. I feel like I've gone through the first nine months of the year and totally consumed everything Netflix had. Told you Money Heist was a great show. Dug that. Alice in Borderland was a fun show out of Japan. Dug that. <clears throat> But I'm not surprised that more North American usage dipped. And that brings into question, this is going to be a very important quarter for Netflix. The repeat or Tuesday after the close of the markets. Speaking of later this week, two of the biggest jackpots in the United States history have grown even larger after no winner winner chicken dinners this weekend. Mega Millions will have a projected $850 million jackpot, the third largest in lottery history, and the second and that, that game's second biggest, largest lottery ever. That comes on Tuesday night. A projected $730 million will be up for grabs the next night in Powerball. So if you add up the two, what is that? $1.38 billion? Ooh. Yes, please. Well, like said, gonna set my soul, gonna set my a little Viva Las Vegas. A little sports gambling. A little, a little Elvis. You know his brother was named Venus? Wasn't allowed on TV because of his name. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money invested, and more. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. How I wish that there were Portions of our programming are brought to you by our good friends at Provident Credit Union. With 21 Bay Area locations to serve you and your banking needs, visit ProvidenceCU.org. Now back to Rob Black and your money with your host, Rob Black, on the Bay Area's business leader, AM 1220 KDOW. Needing something good right now. We could be screaming till the sun comes out. And when we wait. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. I typically spend about an hour to two hours the night before a radio broadcast digesting 
maybe the news the weekend or the news after the market closed. Last night I was doing this, and when I was finished, I had a pretty good idea of what to talk about this week. Obviously, Biden in the inauguration, potential violence in the inauguration. Um, the drama that will be the list of people being forgiven by Trump will be dramatic because it's going to have celebrity names on it. And I, I think we're all wondering, will the Tiger King or the Lion King or, or I guess it was the Tiger King, will he get a pardon? And if so, what will we say about it? Will Donald Trump Jr. get a pardon? What will we say about it? it? When all that was said and done yesterday, and I had a pretty good concept, I, I turned on Sports Center. I tend to like Scott Van Pelt as a broadcaster. I tend not to like sports. I tend to like broadcasters who do their job really well. And I'm always interested to see what he has to say. And I think he's on typically Sunday nights. But it wasn't Sunday night. It was Monday night. And he's no longer on Monday nights because he used to do Monday night football recaps. And, okay, so I, I turned it on. And I was like, oh, okay, he's not on. So I stayed there for a second. And one of the headlines came across that reminded me of very 21st century. Um, there was a report out from Jeff Passan that said the New York Mets general manager, Jared Porter, hired by the New York Mets just one month previous, had sent unsolicited text messages and images to a female reporter back in 2016. Ah! And there was pictures that he later referred to, well, that wasn't my anatomy. That was stunt photography. And you could kind of figure out where it went here. It kind of went R rating, R X rating, sent a nude picture of himself. And he later said, no, no, that wasn't me. That was, I just searched for that on the internet because trust me, that's not me. And that doesn't make it any better. It may even make it worse other than just say full on, I'm sorry. But he got fired. And it's a quick reminder of actions have consequences on the internet. And it's not lost on me. The Capitol rioters are coming out and saying, well, Trump made me do it. He told us to do it. And we want to be forgiven. And it ain't going to happen. You the can't internet, fix stupid. The internet can't be fixed. Once it's out there, it's out there. And it's a constant reminder. Tell your kids, like, not to post stupid stuff. I bring that up in large part because the... In another week, in another era, that could have been a big story, like general manager taken down by unwanted sex pictures. That, that's so hashtag Me Too movement. And we're, we're past that. We're now on to something totally different movement, right? We're not, but we are. Not a surprise that they terminated because the new owner of the Mets isn't the old owner. And he's a billionaire who made his billions probably investing in tech companies. And he knows the power of making mistakes on tech. I just throw that out there as kind of a nice reminder of talk to your children about being appropriate. Um, there's a lot of things out there. And let's not forget we're parents in theory. Kind of a mixed day on Wall Street. I'm not liking it. Last night when I was doing my homework for the show, I was leaning towards, oh, Janet Yellen. She's talking about $2 trillion stimulus. Go big or don't or go home. She's talking what Wall Street's going to want to hear. Markets look like they're going to be opening nicely. And then they kind of turned a little bit mixed here and there. Um... When I say they, they looked like they were going to open nicely, the futures looked – they were poised with some buying. Now that we've opened, we've, we've trended a little bit lower in the S&P and the Dow. We started higher, but we're trending lower. We're still positive. The NASDAQ started in the green, but instantly went to the red. But where do we go as the day plays out? It is impossible to tell. In large part, I think Wall Street's kind of focused on tomorrow. The sun will come out tomorrow on the inauguration. Will there or will there not be violence? What does it mean for in, any sort of presidential mandate? 
what did the first 100 days under Biden look like? Um, there is going to be a transition of power, I'm pretty sure. Maybe a month ago, two months ago, we weren't as sure. But we've kind of come to the reckoning that this is going to happen. Wall Street wants it to happen peacefully, I think. But regardless, Wall Street will be back on Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, and Friday morning doing what it does. Arbitrage in the future. So take a look at gold and silver. They're slightly higher. They're not telling us anything today. Ten-year treasury has cracked 1.1%. So now it's 1.11. And as it marches higher, it has confidence in the world economy and confidence in the U.S. economy. And that should lower the cost of money. No, no, no. It should raise the cost of money, which should lower the flight of ease to low-cost mortgages, low-cost bonds, to maybe you want to pay attention to them. Maybe they can now offer a better return than you were thinking. When the 10-year treasury was going to give you 60 basis points, you're like, no, I think inflation will be more than that. But now it's at 1.1%. You're like, well, I kind of think inflation's going to be more at two. So if that 10 year treasury goes to two and a half, maybe I'll pick it instead of picking stocks. Maybe it'll take it to three, three and a half for you to say, I'm going to pick the 10 year treasury, safety, bond, cash versus going after stock market, which we've seen 10, 20, 30, 40% corrections in last year. So I get why we're watching this puppy. To me, it's a play on – you could pay a premium for a company and their cash flow when the cost of money is super cheap. But as the cost of money becomes more expensive, you look more at valuation and less at free cash flow. But that's just me. And again, we're all different investors in how we approach this. There's no one-size-fits-all. Bitcoin's at 37129 Still enjoying a good year and a very good 14 months. Pfizer and BioNTech, Moderna to get $15 billion from COVID vaccine. You want to know what you get in sales? There you go. Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna are set to make the lion's share of the COVID-19 vaccine sales. They're going to rake in $14.7 billion in revenue over the next three years. 2021 is set to become quite a year for the pharmaceutical companies leading the COVID-19 vaccine race. The vaccine developed by Massachusetts-based Moderna expected to generate $3.5 billion in revenue this year, $400 million more than the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine. The needle jab prick has been approved in the United States, the UK, the EU, the Canada, and Israel. So it's big business. And, and in theory, it could be big business and a boom for companies like CVS, publicly traded company, and Walgreens. It could be a boom for them because when I go get my – do you know how many times I go in CVS a year? Once for a flu shot. Do you know how many times I'm going to go in this year? Maybe for a flu shot <coughs> and maybe for two pricks of a, a COVID test. Not a COVID test, but a COVID vaccine. Or do I wait for the Johnson Johnson? You only need one of them. I don't know. But when I do go and I go, ooh, I forgot it's Valentine's Day. I better get a card and some chocolate. Or I go, ooh, I forgot it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm like, I didn't know they made green Hershey M&Ms. <coughs> and I get sucked into buying something I didn't want to buy. And that's big business for retail. The old getting sucked in. Um, so we'll talk about vaccines and that as the days and the episodes go on. Hopefully by March, April this year, we'll start getting to 20, 25 percent of our population vaccinated. And we can start saying, well, at least we're not dying 4000 a day. And we'll say maybe 3,000 or 2,000 or 1,500, depending on super spreader events and other things uh, tied towards mutations. But hopefully the news should start getting better, which should hopefully 
uh, be opening the floodgates of cash coming into the stock markets or the U.S. market from European markets or the U.S. market from Asian markets. <coughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk up. Tesla's hired today. They've introduced a Model Y in China, which was built and made in China. <coughs> That's an accomplishment. It's a super extended stock. It's tough to make a case for with fresh money. But they're on a roll. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money and investment more. Find me online at Rob Black Show. If you wanted to. Kind will be on my side. Visit Rob Black online at robblack.com. Now, back to Rob Black and your money on AM 1220 KDOW. ground for script writers, script doctors in Hollywood in the years to come. It is only a matter of time before we get to see documentaries and movies and television shows produced about the Capitol riots. I have to imagine that one of those 911 shows will do a whole episode dedicated to it. Um, although they don't have a Washington 911, but I guess they have kind of a Texas and California, LA. I don't know. But it's going to be a fertile ground for writers for the years to come because we have the Capitol insurrection. We've got a president who won the election but lost the election, but says he won the election but lost the election. What's going on there, right? That'll play out in the movies at some point in time. Think of the guy who writes West Wing, Aaron Sorkin. You don't think he's punching up a script on that puppy? You better believe he is. But also in the years to come, we're going to see documentaries about husband and wives working together at Pfizer or BioNTech or Moderna. Kate, Kate, I think I have it. I think I got the COVID-19 genetic code de decompiled, and I think I know how to, to solve it. It's heroic what we're seeing from these guys at this point in time. I know you're saying it's not heroic. They're just making a Petri dish of, of fungus and put it in our arms. No. As of January 10, a total of 25.8 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered worldwide. Statistics show that China is accounting for a third of that number with 9 million. The U.S. ranks number two with 8 million. In the U.K., they approved the Pfizer-BioNTech really quickly and they're like how did they do that how did they beat the united states to it and trump was furious again part of the script um the uk is currently vaccinating 140 people per minute against the coronavirus that's an impressive statistic and again like i said there's gonna be movies made about what we're going through right here right now and they're gonna be dramatic how about elon musk becoming the world's wealthiest man no and it, only to lose it a couple days later, back to Jeff Bezos. Only to get it back. No. Elon Musk is an interesting man. Maybe on a detriment, but he's an interesting man. There's a video game company that's trying to make a game about colonizing Mars, and they want to use SpaceX. And he's like, yeah, I'm fine with that. You're not going to protect that logo. You're not going to protect that. You're not, like, you're not going to say no. You're not going to shut it down. You're not going to ask for a piece of profits. No. He likes video games. He likes video games so much he was married to a woman. Is, is he married? No, he's not married to Grimes, is he? He's baby daddy to Grimes' baby, who is of proper video game age. And I say that because she makes music for people who play video games. 
The IEA expects global oil demand to recover more slowly in early 2021 before staging a stronger comeback in the second half of the year. I'm not saying the IEA should be your investment advisor, but I'm also not saying they shouldn't be. Consult a broker advisor for taking action ever on any concept, ideas, or stocks mentioned on this show. But the IEA, the International Energy Association, question mark? When they say there's going to be more demand for oil in the second half of the year, that probably means they expect more business in the second half of the year. Maybe they're extrapolating some of the COVID numbers out. I don't know. All I can tell you is the second half of 2021 is looking better than the first half of 2021. And as an investor, that's good to know. $1.6 billion combined Mega Millions Powerball jackpots this week. I'm not interested. The only thing of interest to me is the argument of what would you do with the money? That's worth the $2. Honey, I played the lottery. Honey, you didn't play the lottery. You're going to lose. You know you're going to lose. Why did you spend all of our, our dinner money on that? I said, no, it wasn't there. It's was just two bucks. And you go, honey, I want to talk to you. I want to look you in your eyes and touch both sides of your cheeks at the same time and say, what would you do with $1.4 billion or $1.6 billion? And then for like 10, 15 minutes, you can go, I, 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 would, I, would, I would pay for every spade and neutering in San Francisco and all the whole Bay Area. I would do that. I would do that. I would do that. I would do that. And, 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 and I pay off all my student loan debt. I, I would do that. I would do that. And then you're like, I don't even know what I would do with that kind of money. And you realize how big that pot of money is. And it's kind of fun for a minute or two to live in a world where you are one of the richest people on the planet and how silly you just got by paying off spade and neuterings. But that's your whim and you are totally allowed to play with whims in a $2 fantasy. I don't want you to spend more than $2. It doesn't increase your odds. It's And more people are playing it now than ever before. Play it when it's at $100 million, not $1.6 billion. It's fun to watch, though. <clears throat> it's just fun to see people having that dream for 2 bucks. And again, that's where it's worth it. The reality of are you going to win it is not a truth. Biden administration is reportedly set to keep inbound travel restrictions in place for passengers from Europe, the UK, and Brazil. The Trump administration wanted to relax those beginning January 26, which, again, I don't really know what's going on politically right now because I'm trying to mute it down a little bit. But was Trump basically sending a middle finger to the United States saying, yeah, you can travel. Now that I'm out of office, come on in. Bring that disease with you. Because Biden went instantly went like, no, 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 no. That's not going to fly on my watch. But this is the stuff we're going to have to deal with this week. For someone like a Delta, it's big news when we're flying back and forth to Europe. For someone like Southwest, not so much. So I'm more of a Southwest person because it doesn't need the international travel. It just needs the vaccine rolling out in the United States. Anyhow, and anyway, you can find me online at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. <laughs>